What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Shout out to everyone who's continuing to follow my journey from a student pilot all the way to an airline commercial pilot. Guys, you know how we do. Do me a huge favor. Today's CFI is Jeff. Please leave a comment in the comment section that says, thank you, Jeff, or hashtag where's Andrew because Andrew's my main CFI and he's nowhere to be found. So either leave a comment that says, Thank you, Jeff, or hashtag where's Andrew. All right, guys, if you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. And as always, please share with anyone that's interested in aviation or any other student pilots that you may know. All right, guys, until next time, enjoy the video. Forgot to tell you guys one thing, which is my GoPro actually died 10 minutes after I started the filming. So that's why it's a very short video and only a partial of the actual Sims training that I did next time i'll make sure to keep it charged all right guys enjoy the video So you know the, um, the, the uh, you can't really see it in this, but the um, the rudders in the back, it's in the back of the vertical fan, and you yep. control that with the rudder pedals. Yep. And uh, when you tip up on the pedals, it brakes. Okay. And you have individual brake. Uh, I don't know if you've been running farm equipment or anything like that, but tractors have individual brakes. Okay. And um, so you can you know, lock one wheel, and um, you know, that can help with, with directional steering if it a strong crosswind or something and the ailerons you can't really see them but they're now on the wings and they uh, okay they cause it to bang okay and then the runner uh makes it be coordinated so that um you have the proper amount of bank for the rate of turn okay and um it, we'll see that this, this little ball is called the inclinometer and that's inclinometer like, yeah it's curved and it's, it's i think it's like kerosene okay kerosene doesn't evaporate and so it moves that fluid so if it's um if it's uncoordinated the ball will go out of the center Okay. And I'll show you how that, I can really feel it in the airplane. When you get the plane, your instructor will show you that, but you'll see how it, uh, uh, so if you go into a turn and you don't have enough rate of turn, yep. you know, to give the, the G-force down, the ball will start to, to go out of the center. It, it, okay. It, it, like if you're in a left turn, yep. gravity will pull it down. So okay. You, you give it a little left rudder and that'll bring that ball. It's, it's so it'll speed. help you turn, but keep the plane up rather yeah. than drifting down. Yeah. Well, no, there's no big deal on that for a second. So, uh, if you've got too much rate of turn, mm -hmm. like you can turn without banking at all. It's like it's called a skid. Okay. So, but if you, you bump slides around the seat, it's very uncomfortable. So okay. That's why you go into the bank. Okay. So, if that's the case, the ball is going to be up the other side. So, you have to get too much rudders. So okay. Yeah. So, we're going to mess around with that today. Okay. And, uh, but now what happens is you're, okay, if plane weighs, say, 2,000 pounds. Okay. Uh, with half fuel on the two of us. You'll have 2,000 pounds of lift. Mm -hmm. if you'll stay in level flight. Okay. But that's so that wing is picking coming up vertically. When you go into a turn, so the the, um, the bank angle is what's causing the plane to start turning. So your coefficient of lift is being straight up now. Yeah. It's starting to go sideways. Sideways. So you don't have as much lift holding up in the air. Okay, it makes sense. So you have to pull back on the wheel a little bit to increase the angle of attack. Mm, the wing, okay. Which increases okay. the lift a little bit. Okay. And you'll see, we'll, we'll try it without the, the uh, uh, and and the sun sound. And the house. So we have a checklist here um, okay. to get the engine started. Okay. And uh, the cool thing is we're not racking up the tap. This, uh, when, when you're at the flight school, as soon as the engine starts running, the, the Hobbs meter starts. Some guy with the last name of Hobbs, H-O-B-B-S. Yeah. The, designed in the Hobbs meter, and that's just clock time. It it's just for the engine, right? Yeah, it yeah. cooks off okay. a tenth of an hour. Okay. So that's normally how you pay for the plane. In the okay. Instructor. And instructor would probably charge the, the flat blocker time off. I charge for clock time, what the plane's running. Okay, okay. So, um, I don't know if you guys, I don't know how the flight schools do that with uh, CCPC. So anyway, oh, and they found out years ago, it used to be, it used to be linked to the master switch. Mm, okay. Um, you can the engine will run with the master switch off. Right. You just won't have any radios. Any any of the electronics. Right, but because right. you have magnetos that generate yep. their own electricity. 
to spark the plane. And that's separate from all the all yeah. the electrical components. So people would turn the master off and fly the plane around, and the flight school wouldn't get any money for mm. the plane. Mm. So they, they now they have it hot wired, uh, and it has a. Um, Oh, that's an interesting trick. <laughs> it's, it's activated by oil pressure. Oh, okay, okay. So oil pressure activates. So once the oil pressure's been running a certain amount of time, it automatically kicks on yeah, the... It kicks yeah. on the hot uh, switch. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, but tonight we're not racking up any bills at all, so they just pay me and we don't have to worry about that. So, um, the first thing we do is uh, just get your seat adjusted properly so you're comfortable. Yep. And uh, so at 172s, you probably have um, cranks underneath so you can raise and lower the seat. Okay. Get yourself really comfortable uh, sitting on And the crank is usually underneath the seat or on the side? Yeah. No, we'll show you these crank in there. Okay. Uh, okay. Like fully articulating. Then um, the avionics need to be off. So they're going to be on an avionics master switch. Right here. That's the that's the oh here that's right. the, yeah that's the avionics master. So you want that off when you start the engine because it gets to be uh, when you first start it up there could be a surge of uh, energizing through the alternator that might over you know, spike. Okay. Kind of problem. Never heard of it happening, but we always turn them off. And that's this avionics switch, right? Okay. And the plane you're going to learn and should have an avionics master. Okay. Uh, the autopilot should be off. And so this is uh, in, in it's in the off position yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, checklists are you know like your Bible when you're flying airplanes. So you yep. just don't want to forget anything. Perfect. I, I have uh, I had my checklist in four flight. Okay. Okay. I had a yoke mounted my personal airplane. Now I hit, oh. the, hit the checklist. You just get right down. And, you know. Like, Very cool. I think I have a knee thing, knee pad with a little iPad for my four flight, so I can use it yeah. while I'm in flying. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you may find that there's a, a yoke mount that you're comfortable with. Okay. Uh, cool. So that's something to figure out what you're going to be playing. What's your yoke mount is? Where is it? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. I put mine right on the yoke here. Okay. It's, okay. It's just, uh, oh, so it's actual yoke yeah. mount. Okay. And, uh, you are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. Airplanes, <laughs> depending on where the instrument layout is, it might block the instrument. Some of that instrument panels. Yeah. yeah. So you want to be mindful Most of that. Most of the airline guys have like a side mount. Yeah. Okay. So, I prefer that, but. Um, but you know, you, you get a moving map like I fly instruments, and yeah, um, you know, when I'm on approach, you now you have it on the GPS, but you back it up with the four flight. Four flight, no. Yeah. Uh, the autopilot should be off. This doesn't really have the one off switch, but we'll just go through the motions. Does a 172 have an ET? Uh, some of them do, some yeah. of them don't. So, um, and and there's probably four or five 172s at the school you're in, yeah, so. yeah. So the beacon goes on, uh, that's a rotating beacon that's up on the tail. And uh, we usually leave that on. BCN is the uh, beacon. Okay. BCN. So it's the beacon on. lights, right? Yeah, it's right on the tail. It's okay. Uh, flashing red light on the tail. Um, the air charter company I flew for, they said, uh, you pilot operating handbooks, they go on all the time. Okay. That way, uh, if you see a plane with the beacon on, now we'll come on until the master's on. Okay. If you're around an airplane with a beacon, that probably means they're getting ready to start the engine, so you don't want to get too yeah, close. Too close. And if, you, if you're wondering whether you left the master switch on, or yeah, you, know, you turn around and look, and if the beacon's not flashing, nah, I turn it off. Okay. Okay. So, a couple good reasons for it. Uh, throttle will crack at a quarter of an inch. That's the throttle's here. Okay. And um, uh, it's in real airplanes, they get this little locking knob right here mm -hmm. that uh, keeps it from vibrating out. So if you're in a if you're climbing, yeah, and uh, it will like shake, it'll, it'll shake, shake out, yeah, vibrate out, yeah. So you, you can lock it right here. The simulator, you don't have to worry about. It, so we just crack it. Um, when you get in a real airplane, they sometimes don't like to have too much throttle. Okay. They, um, just like you start a little one though, or something. Yeah. A lot of power to throttle it to kick some chokes in the one run. Okay. So I don't like to take it to a one though. Uh, the mixture goes. Uh, okay, we're gonna. This is set up like a fuel injected. Okay. So you actually um, instead of carburetor, right? Yeah. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna do this as, if it's carburetor. So this okay. instead of full lean is gonna be full rich, and probably eighty percent of the flying you're gonna be doing is gonna be full rich because you're gonna be climbing and descending and doing all kinds. And once you're in cruise flight, you lean it for uh, uh, fuel efficiency. Okay. Like my airplane. If you leave it full rich at cruise power, it's yeah. burning like 19 gallons an hour. Oh, wow. If you pull it back to um, the proper mixture, yeah. it's more like 12 and a half. Okay. Big difference. Big plus, difference, yeah. Plus you get foul plugs. Okay. Too, too much fuel. Yeah. So we'll get full lean. These controls should be almost exactly like this.